Welcome back to IndyCar Series 2005, and outside of the Indianapolis 500, I consider this race to be the most important in the series. Today, we are racing at Nazareth Speedway, which unfortunately no longer exists in real life. It was closed in 2004. But in my opinion, it's one of the greatest short ovals ever constructed. It's one of the most interesting and one of the most unique. Uh, so it's going to be a kind of matter of pride uh, for me to try to win here today. And certainly in the first uh, IndyCar game, IndyCar Series 2003, I did thousands of laps. I'm not even uh, joking with you on that one uh, around this track because I found it was the most interesting to drive. The racing was very interesting. We'll see lots of lap traffic, lots of uh, tight racing. The track is not very wide. It's uh, very difficult. It's almost like a road course, uh, but at 180 miles per hour. So uh, here are the point standings after the last race at Kentucky in which we got the win and we go within a race victory of taking the points lead from Scott Dixon. But again, we are going to need some, uh, some bad luck from Dixon to try to get uh, closer to that points lead uh, today. Here's a look at the rest of the standings as they run so far. 34 drivers have made races so far in this season. So, after I gave Nazareth a great introduction, or at least I thought it was a great introduction, let's hand it over to someone who's a little more professional than I am, Bob Jenkins, to get us started. Nazareth Speedway has always been one of the toughest tracks on the IndyCar series, but now that it has been moved to the latter stages of the schedule as race 13, Nazareth becomes an even more interesting prospect. There will be plenty of pressure on you to put in a good performance on this demanding track. Rebuilt under the direction of legendary open-wheel team owner Roger Penske in 1986, the track saw its first IRL race in 2002. The Nazareth circuit has a deserved reputation for being difficult to drive. The turns have a banking of between three and six degrees, and a fast, smooth running surface can lure you into a false sense of security. The stings in Nazareth's tail are its elevation change of 34 feet, a downhill backstretch, an uphill front stretch, and the unusual shape of its turns. Officially, there are four turns, although the track's D shape makes this fact highly debated. The short nature of the Nazareth circuit means that your car will run the high downforce, short oval wing configuration. You need to have your wits about you all the way through a race on this unusual track and make sure your car is set up just right for those elevation changes. Also, prepare to spend much of the race in traffic with almost no chance to relax. Despite its peculiarities though, Nazareth has been called the world's fastest mile and races here are always exciting. So here we are, ready for qualifying. Mark Taylor takes the provisional pole, but uh, quickly loses it to Alex Barron, who is uh, kind of a surprise on the pole so far. Uh, not uh, for very long, though, because now Scott Dixon and Kenny Breck hold the front row. We are going to roll off once again ahead of the Penske cars, so it's going to be kind of a crapshoot whether or not we're going to be able to keep the pole even if we take it from Scott Dixon. Let's see if we can run 177 miles an hour here at Nazareth. So here we go, qualifications about to go off. Let's see how far, okay, that should be good. Five laps of fuel, we're not gonna mess with the front wing. I've already got a qualifying setup on it. Uh, it seems like you get a lot of uh, uh, understeer through the corners of this track. I do have a setup on the car. I took a lot of rear wing out for uh, qualifying, took a little bit less out for the racing setup just to give myself a stable rear end in traffic, but in qualifying, you know, you gotta hang it all out and that's what we're gonna try to do. So hopefully we can get running here. You, I, in testing, I ran 176 mile per hour laps. I think we're going to be Your pretty close to lap. Dixon's time, and I haven't really run fast on uh, uh, low tanks, so it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out. As I didn't get through uh, turn two, I guess you could call it, as well as possible, you heard Bob Jenkins talk about the, uh, the debate about corners on this track. Some people think there's as many as seven. Uh, some people say there's as few as three. So here we go. 174 on the warm-up. Down a gear. Try not to lose too much momentum through turn two onto the back straightaway. You can see the massive elevation changes on this racetrack. And up the hill once again to the start-finish line. 175, not where we need to be yet. 
Uh, I probably slowed down. I slowed down way too much through there. Way too much through there. We're going to have to take a lot of out of it here in turn three. Oh, no. I just did. Just missed the corner there. 173. Yeah, not amazing. That run puts you at ninth. So ninth place. Not an amazing qualifying uh, attempt there, but we're mid-pack. We're going to have to work our way through the field. The pole position does go to Scott Dixon. So once again, Dixon bests us, uh, at least in qualifying. We'll have to race our way up to him. So let's take a look at the Firestone Indy 225 starting grid. So the pole position goes to Scott Dixon. Alongside him is Tony Kanaan, two championship rivals right there. Herta on the inside of row two and on the outside is Jill DeFerrin. Row three, Elio Castro Neves. Alongside Thomas Schechter, row number four. Inside is Kenny Breck. And on the outside is Sam Hornish Jr. Row number five, inside is me. Alongside Alex Barron with a great qualifying run. 11, Roger Yasakawa. And on the outside of row six is Robbie Buell, Sarah Fisher, and... Al Jr. will roll off in row 7. Row 8, Buddy Rice on the inside and Dan Weldon on the outside. Our Lord and Savior, Buddy Lazier, alongside A.J. Foyt in row number 9. Row 10 will be Scott Sharp alongside with Greg Ray. Row number 11, Tora Takagi along with Felipe Giafoni. And Mark Taylor will start alongside Ed Carpenter, a couple of Indy Lights arrivals. And in the final row, all by himself, is Dario Franchitti once again. Not really the best qualifier uh, for whatever reason in this game, as I seem to say every single race. So here we are, ready to go racing at Nazareth Speedway. This track still technically exists. I was there in uh, the winter of 2016, but uh, it's a shambles of its former self. Green is out, we're racing into the very treacherous turn one for the first time. I've got the fuel mix turned up. We're going to try to go to the front here early on because traffic is going to be a big key to this one, and we don't want to get caught out uh, by being too far at the back or uh, trapped in the back uh, because lap traffic is going to be a key as well as, obviously, the traffic uh, from the uh, rest of the field. Let's look at Kenny Breck. Very slow off of there. We'll go to the inside of him in turn one. A very fast kink, which he do get some understeer on the exit uh, from. If you're not very good, there's a, 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 a bump there at the exit of turn two as well that can throw your car to the side. This is a, such a difficult course. There's so many things that can go wrong on it, and uh, only a few ways to make it go right. Look at that run we got off the final corner. Side by side with Elio through turn one. That didn't work out for Mark Lundell and Elio Castroneves. And oh, in 2001, and it almost didn't work out for me there either. As we were side by side, we made a little bit of contact with Elio, and Elio falls back. So here we go. Getting a good run off of the final corner once again and passing Thomas Schechter. So now we're going to be looking up to the top four, which is Herta, Kanan, DeFerrin, and, of course, Scott Dixon. But again, we're burning a lot of fuel, and there's a fi it's a 56 laps race here. It's not the typical 50, and there is a wing down in turn number three here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to operate off of the, uh, the statement that it's three corners. So this is turn one, a little kink. The big sweeper here is turn two, and the final corner is turn three. How about that? What is it with uh, Pennsylvania and three-corner racetracks? But anyway, and Kanan goes to the lead. Kanan has passed Scott Dixon, and Brian Hurd is looking to the inside as well. We will go to the inside of DeFerrin, but he cowboys it around the outside, and he'll hold on to the position for now. We're going to um, put the fuel mix down a little bit. And is that Buddy Lazier coming out of the pits? It is. So Buddy Lazier was obviously involved in one of the incidents on track. So not a good run for our Lord and Savior here at Nazareth so far. As Dixon passes Kanan again, we clear to Farron. Now we're going to have a run on Herta, but not able to get him by turn one. So we'll fall into line. Another car coming out of the pits. Looks like Scott Sharp. So Scott Sharp and Buddy Lazier making contact. And uh, the sky is blue and the grass is green, apparently, uh, because those guys have had lots of run-ins in the past, and no, most notably the 2005 Indy 500, which uh, Sharp took uh, Buddy out of contention uh, for the win as we go to the inside of Brian Hurd. I'm totally not salty at Scott Sharp anymore. Totally not salty. I totally won't bring that up to him when I see him at Seabury. N would never think of doing that. Anyway, uh, we passed Brian Herta, and now it's on. For the top three, we're down here in uh, in fuel mix four. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we went down on the fuel to try to get a little bit better mileage. I might even go down to fuel mix three here while we're running behind Dixon. You can see the arrow push right there. Car almost got up into the wall out of turn one. Like I said, if you enter that badly, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Thankfully, I was able to get out of the gas just enough to 
clear the corner. And now, oh, a little bit of grass there. Definitely clip the grass there in turn three. Gonna dive it down into turn one. And still can't quite get to Dixon yet. As we pull off of turn two very, very fast down the back straightaway here. Downhill into turn three. Track bottoms out over here and then moves back up. And, oh, that was close. But we've passed Scott Dixon and have a huge run on Tony Kanaan. But can't quite get the job done yet. Down the back straightaway. For 190 miles an hour on the way in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bad downshift, bad downshift. Bad downshift. Yeah, downshifting uh, into fourth in the middle of the corner. I, uh, I spun the rear wheels up, and that was a very bad thing. Thankfully, Dixon was able to get out of the throttle, not run into me. So we will hold on to everything right now, but we gave Tony Kanata a pretty big lead because of that nonsense right there. 168 miles an hour, despite the, the slide through turn four. But look at this. We are definitely catching Tony Kanata. I'm going to turn the fuel down just a little bit more, try to conserve, since we were uh, very, very uh, not particularly all that conservative at the start of the race. And we are so much faster through turn three. We actually set our fastest lap of the race right there, not even having to worry about fuel mileage, being in fuel mix two. So running a nice, consistent pace right now. Kanan just out in front. We might be able to get him here if we get a good turn three. Kanan blocked me just a little bit there, but he'll go slow off of turn three. We will drive around the outside of Tony Kanan, cut his nose off, and go into the front of the field. But Kanan making a look to the inside. Couldn't quite get there, and I think we may be able to pull away now. Let's see if we can do that. Easy does it through turn three. Very nice. And there's a gap, so very, very good. But like I said earlier, this track is still here for the at least foreseeable future. It was bought uh, by like a company that uh, is like an agricultural company, but they still haven't done anything with it yet. As far as I'm aware, the property is still there. Uh, and you can, uh, people br were able to break in and like take pictures. I When I went there, I was on a time crunch anyway. Uh, it was more just a visit, and uh, I just went over to the road right over here as we cross uh, out of turn two. Uh, there's a little uh, parking lot area that you can kind of just go into and uh, and check out, and that's what I did. And it's right out the exit of turn two. And it's uh, really sad, uh, really, really sad to be there because, I mean, just this track is so awesome. It is so awesome. If I, uh, if I had a lot of money in the world, uh, I'd uh, just... Uh, take uh, na the blueprints from Nazareth and go build them somewhere else, uh, somewhere that wants racing, because, uh, I, you know, I think Nazareth itself, the town, I think they'd be fine with racing, uh, because honestly, the entire city of Nazareth, or I guess the town of Nazareth, is literally just the track. Everything is built around it. Uh, if you've ever been to Nazareth, Pennsylvania, there's like a Dollar General, a Chevy dealership, and that's about it, and it's all surrounding the track, all the subdivisions, all the housing, it's really sad, and the other thing is, the parking lots are uh, are still mowed, like the parking lots you would park in and tailgate. They're still mowed, and they still have those little blue trash barrels that you would see on a race weekend. Uh, if you just looked at the parking lots, you'd think uh, they'd be having a race the next weekend, but not the case. It's kind of sad too that they only decide to maintain the uh, the parking lots and and not maintain the uh, the actual racetrack on the property. Uh, people uh, wonder why people hate ISC. Uh, the death of Nazareth Speedway is a great, great reason to hate ISC. Pretty, pretty terrible company, if you ask me. But uh, yeah, really a shame. But I'm glad it's immortalized in games like this. I actually uh, modified a version for the original R Factor of Nazareth Speedway. There was a version available of Nazareth for R Factor 1, but it was pretty terrible. Uh, so I actually overhauled it myself. I uh, redid the AI for the track, and I redid the camera angles. I'm gonna, I, I should release that sometime, because I still have all the files on my computer uh, that I have access to, and I can uh, just, uh, I can throw them up. Uh, so maybe someday I'll put them on like a, a file share site, and you can uh, drive at a, 
proper Nazareth Speedway. Uh, but but for now, if you have one of these games, man, this is just fantastic. I, I think uh, at some point I may do 100% race here because it's just that great. So we're coming up. Speaking of the race, remember the race that we <laughs> were doing? You can just tell that I have a lot of muscle memory of this track. And we are coming up behind A.J. Foyt IV, who is one of the guys, I believe, caught up in the Shamazel on lap one, which involved Buddy Lazier and Scott Sharp as well, because they're all way down the field. And I was very slow through there, and we are definitely catching lap traffic now. Not just A.J. Foyt, but there's more up in front of him. And this is where things are going to get dicey. As you can see, I just had to back out of the throttle right there. Just a little bit of a lift. Let's see if we can pass. No, maybe not. We're gonna have to. You know, we're gonna have to pass him in turn three, and that's not really where I want to do it. Ah, they see. There you go. I was not confident passing him. I downshifted again, so. I'm just gonna have to take my lumps if I back out of the throttle. We need to stay in fifth gear for sure. Otherwise, the back end is gonna step, jump around and that's gonna be in tr uh, big, us in big trouble. So let's see if we can get a run on Foyt here. I guess I could just turn the wick up, but I don't really wanna do that. I've already lost two seconds to Kanan. And Dixon's still running in third. But at least there's a car buffer between me and Kanan at this point, and that's good for the point standings. So I really took a risk there in turn three, got a little too low, a lot lower than I would have otherwise liked to do. You are 4.3 seconds ahead of Kanan. Really good run out of turn two again. Starting to come up behind AJ Foyt right here into three and four. And just look, he blocked me. He friggin' blocked me. There's there's nothing, nowhere I could go right there. This is getting ridiculous. Quattro, you gotta stop driving like crap, son. I could just, I mean, I could turn the wick up, but we've got four laps left of fuel. There's really no reason to go for it. I can stay here mired in lap traffic. I'm, it's, it's not a big deal. We still got a five second lead on Kanan. I just said that. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so Foyt. Let's try the outside. There it is. There it is. Okay, so we may have to. Oh, what are you doing, AJ Foyt? Foyt the fourth, you're, you're garbage. Why are you racing? I get it. Maybe there's going to be a yellow. Maybe you need to stay in the lead lap. Yeah, there's no lucky dogs in IndyCar. I get all that. But you're driving like garbage. Next lap. And here come a lot of the leaders into the pits, actually. The pits on your next lap. So he's telling us to come into the pits. I'm going to save some more fuel. We're going to go around one more time. We should be able to make it. We still got one lap in the tank. Hopefully we won't get caught in traffic in the pits. That's what I'm a little bit worried about. But we'll just have to see how it goes. Of course, the pit entrance on this track is a little bit iffy. So we come around to lap Scott Dixon. So would the yellow come out, we'd be in good shape as we head down the back straightaway and off into the pits. There is a car entering in front of us. So that's a bit disappointing, but we'll just have to wait and see and Watch deal with it. it as we head up into the pits, hard on the brakes, trying not to come in too close behind that guy because we'll be in trouble. We don't need 56 laps of fuel, I can tell you that. Uh, let's go let's go fairly conservative here and go with 30 so we can turn the wick up. We don't need to save the race either. Uh, and we did get held up by Dario there coming into the pits. So Schechter's out ahead of us. So is uh, Baron, but or not Baron. That was uh, Brian Herta. I don't know why I got Alex Baron and Brian Herta confused. Maybe because of that Road America 98 crash that those two had together. As we come out of the pits, I think just ahead, if I'm not mistaken, of Dario Franchitti. Indeed we are. So that's a good thing. Up to Fuel Mix 7. Now we got to wait for the AI driver to drive the car out of the pits before we get back to it. Uh, yeah, lap 35 of 56. And yeah, we're going to turn it down just a little bit to right Fuel tail. Mix 5. And here come uh, the... Mark. 
back markers is we're gonna have to scrub the tires in here we don't want to go too hard yet but we are in lap traffic and that's gonna be a big big key oh look at this the Kelly racing guys got together that's sharp and that is a yellow because somebody just plowed into the back of them so let's see what the situation is here but between sharp and Unser, it looks like they've made contact going into turn three. So that's what started this. They were going slow on the inside. And here comes all the traffic coming through. Ed Carpenter just barely avoids. And Dario Franchitti does not. Running straight into the back of Unster Jr. and taking both out of the race. So let's go on board with Dario Franchitti, see what he saw from his perspective. It's not the first time he's run up somebody from behind and uh, once again one more look let's see if we can see what happened between sharp and unser as they come down to the corner yeah just sharp just uh, shoves it in a little too deep there i think unser got held up by weldon and here come all the cars along the outside and then here in just a second as they head through turn one everything okay here then there's the big glob of traffic that i was involved in trying to get to the inside of mark taylor and here comes dario and just wow Wow. Green flag this time by. So, a uh, really weird yellow. Uh, there are lots of cars that were getting wave rounds. The field is very spread out, but I guess we're about to go back to green. And, green. yeah, we're back to racing here at Nazareth. So, field is very spread out. Very, very spread out. There was more contact under the yellow. It wasn't warranting a replay. Nobody else was out of the race. Uh, but uh, car, guys like Baron knocked wings off. Several of the guys who were lapped cars came into the pits under the yellow. Uh, it was just very, very weird. And uh, you can see the pack up behind me. So clearly there are guys trying to come back up through the field. Kanan is eight seconds behind. He's in second place uh, right now with Dixon in third. So Scott Dixon still lurking. But who knows here in the last 11 laps or so. Uh, how well, 11 laps that's not quite right 43 56 that's that math does not add up but regardless we're back to racing we finally get to scrub these tires in they were still cold when we uh, uh, went yellow there I was just in the process of heating them up and then we had the trouble ahead of so seven and a half seconds ahead of Kanan not a big ask right now or not a big worry that he would somehow get away from me. I'm going to turn the wick up a little bit. Let's see if we can run some fast laps. Obviously, I'm not going to take any too big of risks, but uh, obviously we can just uh, try to pull away a little bit from Carpenter because I think Carpenter's looking a little bit like he might want to pass me, get his lap back, and I don't want to deal with that. So, yeah, not a very packed-up restart for sure. Kind of interesting how that all worked out. But I'll take it because that means I don't have to worry too much about getting past. Kanan was behind me, but I ended up packing up the field, or packing up behind the pace car, and he just didn't follow me. He, he got mired in lap traffic and just never decided to, uh, to get pack up behind the pace car, so I don't know what was the deal with Kanan, but regardless, we're run, running 170 mile an hour laps. That's what we need to be doing. We got 7.5 seconds at a TK right now. It's all good in the hood right now. In fact, it's eight seconds, so we're really pulling out a big gap. Robbie Buell is all the way up to sixth place. That's the best run that car has had all season long. So good for Robbie Buell. Uh, I really wish he'd pass Scott Dixon, but uh, we'll have to see how that all works out. Hurt has fallen back to seventh, and Weldon's up to eighth. In fact, Greg Ray is way up there after starting pretty deep in the field as well, as well as Mark Taylor up in 13th. It's a lot of different names, a lot of different faces kind of different places here at Nazareth as it is expected it's it's, a, it's an interesting wild track you are 8.9 seconds ahead of Kanan. and who would expect anything different from a track as unique as this definitely a different challenge as we head down the back straightaway still no real movement in terms of Dixon and uh, DeFerrin that's what I'd kind of like but as long as Kanan stays ahead there that's that's really the big key I think we're coming up behind A.J. Foyt once again, so we're going to have to lap him again. Assuming we actually get up to him in, in six laps' time. There's certainly a possibility that we won't have to deal with him. We'll see. So we're definitely getting a good run off of turn three, lap 51. Lap so this is the fastest lap of the race for me. So 
just breathing the throttle through turn two. Not really trying to go too hard. Don't need really need to, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to take a little bit of weight jacker out of the front just to uh, make sure we're not taking too many risks. I kind of feel like the back sliding a little bit in turn three. So we're not going to deal with that. We're trying not to deal with that. And there is AJ Foyt. Doesn't pay any points to win by 10 seconds. It only pays points to win, so we don't have to fight through this traffic too fast if we don't want to. This is the thing that really makes me nervous, though. Especially them going side by side like that. I'm pretty sure Foyt is not even on the same lap as Greg Ray, but he manages to make that uh, uh, position at least on track up. We get a really good run through turn two. And down the back straight, we'll actually Car be able to right shove side. it down the inside. Outside. Outside. Still there. And uh, lap Foyt. So very good, very good. Coming up behind Weldon. In fact, we are uh, lapping some pretty high profile cars here. To the inside of Weldon. We're coming up to the white flag. Car outside, clear. And lap Dan Weldon. So here we come, up to one lap to go here at Nazareth Speedway. What a weird race this has been. 12 seconds ahead of Kanan. Didn't really see where Dixon was. I think he's still sitting in third. Doesn't look like we'll be able to lap Roger Yasakawa, so this is where we will finish, but it's all good because it's going to be yet another win. Two wins, in, I think it's three wins in a row, including Gateway for us, and our championship keeps on a rolling. And I'm so glad to get a win here at Nazareth. So as we take the win, Tony Kanan will be the second place finisher. It looks like he hasn't crossed the line just yet. Yes, indeed. Now, Scott Dixon will be third. Schechter, Buell, Herta, the last few cars on the lead lap. Go down through the rest of the field, see where your favorite driver ended up finishing. And you can see... Uh, kind of the uh, crazy nature of this race. Lots of cars, multiple laps down, despite the fact that it was only 56 laps and only 56 laps at Nazareth is not very long. Obviously, the lap 34 crash between Frankiti and Unser really threw a monkey wrench into everything. Uh, that made it quite wild. But once again, we take a victory, and that's exactly what we needed to do because that's, you know, a good 20, 22 points, I think. I uh, know, uh, yeah, 22 points, or 23 points over uh, uh, Scott Dixon. So... Hey, we clawed back half of our gap already. We just need to keep winning, and we need Scott Dixon to not finish second because our gap is only going to be sliced by 10 points, and we're starting to get down to the end of the season. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button on it, and we'll see you in the next video.